Okay, so what we are going to do today uh, is hopefully three things. The first one is, uh, well, this, let's call it a game, but after this, uh, an exercise on the arrays, strings, numbers, all the things, not all, but some of the things that we have seen last in the last lecture, just to have an exercise to do something, uh, since it was a uh, Maybe not difficult things, but a lot of them. Uh, then, after the exercise, we will move to uh, speaking about objects and functions, mm -hmm. trying to do some example in, uh, in the process. Um, so my, my idea for today is to try not to use too much slides. So I, I print them out uh, so that I can follow them and not skip any part, but the idea is could be uh, to move a little bit more on the code and then if it's not com comfortable uh, because we have just one projector maybe we can also use a little bit slides today for this reason but this is the plan exercise uh, plus objects and function hmm? that they are still more or less basic fundamental information for JavaScript um, so let's start with this game I call it strange JavaScript behavior and where to find them. Um, do you see, everybody see here, I need to, to, big, to put the, the chart, the font bigger. This way, okay. So this is one way to, so in my idea was one way to to dedicate the first 10 minutes to, to this, but um, they were already passed, but we are going to do this anyway. Um, this is a way to check, if you want, if the model that you have in mind of how JavaScript works is actually the model that JavaScript used for working. Mm? So if there is a match or not. Mm? So we are going to do this game. These are very simple instruction here written hmm? so there is all console logs and basically are or sum or comparison nothing really really hard and we are going to first of all before running it this is on github so if you want you can uh, have it on your computer already now but uh, the game that you are trying to play is to predict what will happen if we run this hmm? so for instance, line five, mm, we know from the slides that not a number is actually a number in JavaScript. Mm. So if we print that, it should, we should see not a number is a number. Mm. That doesn't sound really right, but that is. Um, so let's continue the game. To you, not a number strictly equal to not a number is true or false? Not a number, equal, 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 not a number. Who say true? I'm going to, to write the prediction, then we are going to check them. Uh, null, equal, equal, so loosely equal, just not three equal, just two, false. So null, just a reminder, is a falsy value. We call it falsy value together with undefined, the empty string zero and minus zero. Hmm? So null is a falsy value. So null equal equal false should be true. Empty string equal equal false. True or false? Empty string is a falsy value like null so it should be true um, three equal equal so double three, double equal mm? so the loosely equal not the strict equal the one that perform conversion equal to true so, uh, yeah three compared with true true i'm going to predict that you are not very good in this game uh, True plus true. This is a sum, an addition. 
we are making a decision between two true values, two true, but Boolean true. It could be number, it could be error, it could be a Boolean. What do you predict that this will happen to you? But this is called strange behavior for a reason, right? So something will happen clearly, no? What, what happened to you? True plus true. Maybe a string with what in the middle? True, true, twice true. Do you agree? Or the number two? We need to pick one. The string with double true or the number two? Who we'll say the number two? Who we'll say the double true? Okay, so ma the, the other are abstaining. Okay, so let's say true because the majority was saying true. True is different from one and with these strict differences. So this could be either true or false. Who we'll say true? Who we'll say false? So the true win. And then we will check. So maybe the, the minority is right. Uh, five number plus 10 string. Five hundred and ten. Do you agree? Five one zero. So string concatenation. Five and ten after the five. This is the option. Do you agree or do you want to change your answer? Fifteen. So who is saying fifteen? Four people, five people. Who say 510 as a string? So 510 win for now, at least. So still four. We are missing four. Uh, one minor two minor three. True or false? So we are saying we have to check if one is minor than two and is minor than three. So it's true. How many of you say true? Okay, so let's say true. And the opposite, three greater than two, greater than one. False, true. <laughs> we, we have two options only. So who say false? And who say true? And the other ones, we, we, we don't have, uh, so we don't know in this moment because we have under season. This one, uh, 0 0.2 plus 0 0.1, triple equal 0 0.3. False, yeah, this is not just JavaScript, so probably it's, it's easier to, to get it. And the last one that is very, very nice, which is the result of this thing. It's B, B string plus A plus plus, so double plus, A plus A. <laughs> no, this is not, uh, it's not a Boolean as a result. <laughs> it's not even a number, it's a string as a result. I hear B A undefined A A. Who we'll say something different? We can go with B A undefined A A. B A A A, so without undefined in the middle. Or one monair in the middle. No 
absolute number, you say not where. So yeah, options. So, so B, uh, so let's keep these three options. B, undefined something else, uh, AA or triple A. B, A, some A's after, or I di didn't get where the not a number will, so the, the results is not a number, or the result is not a number. Which one, of th which, which of these three? So, ends up for B, A, undefined, A, A. So not even, the okay, <laughs> four people. Uh, B, A, and with some other A's. A little bit more, and not a number. And a vast majority of, again, abstain. So the majority here, slightly majority, is B, A, some A. But we keep in mind the other answer that you give. Hmm? Okay, so I'm going to save this. We didn't change the code and I'm going to run it so we can check what is actually doing. Hmm? Uh, this is called strange for a way. Hmm? So, so as we predicted, not a number is a number. Good. I did a good prediction. And not a number, equal equal number, triple equal not a number, is false. You said true. First mistake. Hmm? So again, it's called strange. Not a number is unequal to everything, even itself. So nothing is equal to not a number, ever. Not even not a number. Okay, there is a way in JavaScript to check if something is not a number, but this is a function that is called is not a number, is an a n. So that is the way to check if something is not a number or not. You cannot check with this because otherwise not a number will always be different, unequal than any other thing. Mm -hmm. So the prediction was wrong, but it's fine. I mean, uh, we, we did this for understanding. Uh, and so the results is actually false. Uh, null equal equal false with a double equal. You said it was true, but actually it's false. Um, because don't forget that this is a double equal. That is a loosely equality, not a strict equality. So how the, the lose equality works? We had a question last, last time, and I also had the link on, on Slack. They are converting the elements. Hmm? So null, double equal, false. Uh, false is converted. So null has a special, okay. In this case, null has a special meaning in that algorithm. And null is unequal to everything like not a number, except himself and undefined. Hmm? Even if it's falsy. Don't forget, null is a falsy uh, element, but is not equal to false. So that's why we call it falsy, because actually it's not false. It's something that I alone is interpreted with as false, but compared is not false. Hmm? So this is again false. But you got some, some of this, so it's, it's good. Um, the other one, empty string, double equal false, is actually true. So you got it. It's right. Hmm? For the same reason as before. Because in this case, it's a string and a boolean, and the boolean is converted uh, in a number. Uh, and also the string is, is converted in a number. And so the empty string converts to zero, and false converts to zero, and so both are zero. So zero is equal to zero. And the last one also um, is false. Three double equal true. It's false because it's converted. So three is a number, state three. False becomes zero. Three is equal to zero. No. And so it's false. Yeah. Three equal equal true is false. Uh, one, sorry. 
it's converted to one so yeah not zero but any, anyway three is different than one uh, in any case yeah bigger that's right so it's it's converted so this is also to keep in mind just avoid using the double equal so the loosely equality because it does all this kind of conversion and you have to remember the specific rules so if you want to do a real equality just use a triple equal it will solve you a lot of issues especially in longer and bigger code we can try what do you think that it will do zero double equal right yeah. what do you think that it will do yeah. because both are converted in so both are number and both are zero it true because actually is actually minus zero is what is minus zero i mean why even exist but um it exists but it's zero at the end because minus zero is okay um so these these predictions uh, we will say this is right and this is false for that reason and this is actually is true um again let me repeat it one more time prefer always prefer to use the triple equal so the strict equality it will s avoid issue at a certain point hmm? to do a real comparison uh, true plus true is actually two for a similar reason it's converted in number true is one one plus one is actually two very nice um, and the true different from one is actually true hmm? with a triple equal equal hmm? in this case is not converted hmm? so true is actually different from anything because it's not converted in this case it's a triple it's different and it's, there is a double equal so it's the strict inequality hmm? so in this case even if true plus true is two because it's converted in this case this is a strict inequality mm? so it's actually comparing the true boolean with the one number and clearly they are different mm? Ching, uh, five plus ten string uh, is actually 510 as a string because it, it in this case mm, differently from the quality JavaScript is converting the number in a string. In the quality, it will do the, the, the opposite. But here, with the addition, it actually works with a concatenation. And whether you have string plus number or number plus string is always concatenating two strings. So it's 510 as a string, hmm? not as a number. So actually, we should have written this one because it's not a number, it's a string. I mean, we, we can convert it in a in a number but uh, so clearly if you want to, to do some if you have these as a variables one variables plus another variable and one of the two variables happens to be at a certain point can be a number or a string you probably need to check before doing this operation whether is a number or string mm -hmm. and how you check like this type of variable it will get, tell you which is the the type of the content of that variable in that moment hmm? um, one minor two minor three is true so right prediction and three greater than two greater than one is false so we 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 didn't decide before but it's false here why it's false to you so who, who is saying false? Why was saying false? Three greater than two, greater than one. Maybe if three greater than two is true, it's because one is a number. For that specific reason, yeah. 
exactly mm? because it's performing the conversion mm? so uh, also in the other case performing the conversion but in the other case it's not a problem because one is minor than three so it works but in this case one is not greater than one because actually they are the same so it's false okay let me re remind you that this is these are the strange things so if you if there is uh, actually a, a github repository with all these and many other strange things that happen in javascript uh, but this just to use as a game to see which some 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 strange things that javascript is doing on its own hmm? just to keep in mind some alternatives uh, that may happen like don't use the double equal if you can use the triple equal uh, okay D you you got this one zero pl plus two zero point two plus zero point one triple equal zero dot three is actually false and it's it's true so it's right it's false and why it's false you g get it or almost why why it's false no i mean it it does the addition between 0 0.2 and 0 0.1 ah uh, no the one before we we got it because it does the first comparison it's it's one and one is is not greater than one the other one 0 0.2 plus 0 0.1 triple equal 0 0.3 and you say false Yeah, because calculation for floating points is not precise. So actually 0 0.2 plus 0 0.1 will give you something like 0 0.3000045. That actually 0 0.300045 is not equal to 0 0.3 because there are, there are a lot of other numbers after the tree. Hmm? Uh, so, but this is not just JavaScript. It's common to many other languages. For instance, Python has the same issue with po floating point so you need to round them if you need to operate with floating point number for instance hmm? so if you round that to just the first decimal number you get the right result here uh, so that was good and the last one is actually banana as a name as you can see probably uh, so you can read as banana but that's it is b a not a number uh, a that is read as banana because so this is a wrong prediction because it's ba not a number a that is read as we can also read it as banana in main language um why because this one because it's, it's like we had written this in this way b string plus a as a string and it's ba plus plus a as a string hmm? plus a as a string is a unary operator and co try to convert a string in a number so a as a string is not a number so the results of that single operation is not a number and so ba not a number as a string because we are in the process of concatenating string plus a and the result is the fruit it's red as the fruit hmm? so if you go lowercase you actually have all the letter uh, as as the fruit okay so this is again the unary operation operator and it's used to convert if you want something into a string into a number hmm? okay so we got it quite right um, this game So keep in mind some of these things while we continue mm, with more complex things. Mm. And, and there are many other behaviors, but with, with other things like object and function and classes, etc., that we didn't cover yet. So this is just about the things we did last time. Any question? Okay, this was just warm warm up to to wake up a little bit.
Okay, so let's do the exercise then. Uh, it's always it's already on GitHub. We I have this text here. Oh, let me do this. So we have here two exercises, but we 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 let's do the first one for now, and then if we have time or maybe another next week or alone as you prefer, we, you can also do the second one. We can do the second one, but let's start for the first one now. So the goal of the first one is called uh, it's it's basic handling of arrays. So let's play with arrays, and it's called better scores because the goal is to create a small program that, given your exam score, it improves them by removing the bad one and adding good one scores. So in the end, your average will be better than before with this program not in, in in the rest of the life uh, so the program say the text say develop a small javascript program it will be quite small uh, to manage the score of the exam you add in your bachelor degree hmm? so not the one now because it's the second semester of the or the first year but in the in the previous exam hmm? so what is asking first of all define an array with all your score in chronological order so since the first exam you have taken to the last one and we are going to put it maybe five scores seven scores we don't need to have to now to remember all, all the scores that we get and report them so just an exercise for the moment let's ignore course name credits and date so we are just interested in the vote in the score uh, ignore uh, the 30 with load no the maximum is 30 and the score is written uh, the scores are written in the source code so we are going to create an array with just the the score 18 up to 30 in some random order that is the chronological order the final array should be easy then duplicate the array hmm? but in duplicating the array we would like also to so after duplicating the array we would like to eliminate the two worst score in the array and since we are removing two arrays to scores we are adding in the end other two score that they are equal to the rounded average of the existing score hmm? so we are removing the worst one and we are adding uh, two new scores that are the average or the others and as a result we are going to improve the overall um, score and then print both array comparing the score before and after and showing the average in both cases hmm? so this is the the exercise and we are going to do that together now hmm? maybe we can skip the last one if it will become late because it's another average but we already completed the average here so it's just copy and paste hmm? so but this is the exercise so let me open create a file here um, exercise or let's call it score dot javascript and maybe we can put it in the right folder okay okay so uh, the first things that we have to, to write is use strict mode uh, exactly enable the strict mode good use strict strict and and then we have to create the array hmm, with some scores hmm. so we can write const score equal and we can say 25 30 18 27 28 27 30 and 26 so these are 
the score of uh, students and we are going to, to improve them. Mm? So we are going to remove uh, essentially in the new array the 18 and the 25. So we are going to, to remove the two bad votes. And this is the definition mm, of the array. Uh, I don't remember if I told you last time, probably not, but we are going to, to meet this with object as well. Uh, so this is called mm, defining an array with a, an array literal. Mm, and there's also the object definition with an object literal. Do you know what is a literal? What a literal is? In programming language? Yes, no, maybe, maybe. So uh, an operative definition, a literal is any value in a programming language that uh, doesn't change. It's always the same mm, as it's written. Mm. So uh, in programming languages, so this is very uh, informal definition, but in programming languages, in all programming languages, you typically write something like this. Okay, not in all programming languages, but. Um, mm. So five and hello are literals because they always assume the same value. So five is always five. You, you cannot change it, that five here. And hello is always hello as a string. Mm. We cannot change the hello string. We can replace the string, but it's, it's always a string, and it's defined here. Hmm? Uh, a and B are called symbols, because they actually, we, we don't really care about their names. Hmm? They are just a container for a literal. And in basically all programming language, or okay, most probably programming language, uh, primitive, primitive types, primitive variables, uh, values are defined as literal hmm? numbers strings charter strings uh, literal but a complex type are typically not defined with literals in many programming language so do you know java yes so how do you define an array in java so yeah you write like something like array list right maybe of something um, array equal new array list of something etc now it's it's an error because it's javascript uh, so this is not a literal because who is a, what is a array list it depends on the implementation so it's not something that cannot change like five it's actually a symbol so in many programming languages you create a symbol by using something that is a symbol that has some meaning that can change so if tomorrow they decide that array list has a different behavior they can do it and your code will not change hmm? or a different values inside same you delegate to this symbol to have this uh, in javascript you can define arrays with literals because they actually are square parentheses and numbers mm. so it's not symbols are actually numbers or string or something that you can put it inside and also object you can define object with let me remove this uh, you can define object with object literal mm. open and close parentheses graphic parentheses mm. and this is also an object uh, object this is called the object literal because you create the object with actual mm, with actual mm, ad, with literals you define properties you assign value to the properties etc mm, in an object you can also create arrays and object in javascript with not literals so not with array literals with function and methods but this is the preferred way to to work in JavaScript with array literals and object literals and we are going to use it a lot hmm? so when we are going to speak about 
object, you, uh, you will see that we are speaking about object literals for creating the object, that is this one. So this syntax here is called object literal and this syntax here is called array literal. Okay, just to set up terminology. So now let's go back to the, um, to the exercise. So we create an array with an object, uh, with an array literal. Uh, we need to duplicate it. Do you remember how to duplicate an array? Array.from could be a one way, but so I, I open here, okay, you don't see maybe a lot, but I open here the, the, the documentation from, from the Mozilla development, hmm? um, Mozilla development, web docs, uh, and look for array in JavaScript. And so here, uh, as a way of working, especially in the beginning, you can open the documentation here and so here there is description, uh, there are constructors, so you can build an array with a constructor, mm -hmm. uh, not only with the array literal, and there are static methods like from, of, etc., all the properties, and you can see, uh, for instance, um, um, I don't know, mm. so all, all the methods that you have, but let's open one, maybe, index of index of it give you an example and then the syntax the definition what it does so it's pretty pretty good and again it show you in the end of all of these the support in the different browsers and systems of index of that is clearly 100 percent because it's a basic component of of javascript um, so let's remove this a little bit we can create so let's create another array const a better score we can use array from but we can also use if we want to keep with the literals if you remember this the spread operator hmm? so as a reminder the spread operator takes the content of the variables in this case that is put after the three points hmm? and spread it like unzip it so in this case, we are get, get, getting the score array. We are just removing the, the, the container that is the array and keeping the content and put it in another array. Mm -hmm. That is why we have this, the squared bracket. Mm -hmm. So we create a duplicate on array. Array.from is another way to duplicate the array. It's fine. But again, just to also see the literal and the spread operator mm. that again are quite common and shorter to write than not array from score mm. okay and it that was probably easy now we need to eliminate uh, so delete the lowest uh, the two lowest ranking score how we can do that i i can think about at least two different ways to do that both both good we need to delete from score the uh, two lower lowest value We can sort the array and then remove the, the first two. That's one way. There is another way without sorting. We can extract twice the minimum because we, we don't care. Uh, even if we have uh, two 18 mm, or three 18, we don't care which one is going to be removed in this case. So we can just pick the the two minimums that we have what in whatever position they are because we, we don't actually care about the internal order in this moment hmm? so both are valid option clearly let's do both so let's start with the minimum um, so mean score maybe with let 
let mean score how can we extract the minimum do you imagine how we can do there will be and there is hmm, a mat.mean function that returns the lowest value number passed into it or not a number if the parameter if any parameter is not a number and cannot be converted into one hmm? so mean gets maybe you don't see very much very well here but means get a series of numbers separated by a comma doesn't take an array but a series of number and we have numbers in the array hmm? so it's it's mat dot mean hmm? you see here numeric expression to be evaluated so what we are going to write here the spread operator is also you also have a suggestion on wizards record which is good a uh, spread operator of better score hmm? because we we want to preserve the original score array now they are the same array actually so we can operate on the duplicate and we get the first one uh, the minimum and now we can we have to find this minimum in the array and then remove it so how can we do this how we can we find that probably several ways but we can find the index so let index equal better score plus index of we have opened that function before as an example index of and mean score hmm? and again in the score you can read it in the documentation i'm not going to open again the, the documentation because it's it's not readable in this moment here because it's too far there but here on visual studio code to say return the index of the first occurrence of the value in an array and again we don't really care if it's the 18 that we are interested in on another 18 because we just care about having one 18 out of this hmm? so we have the index and at this moment we can um, eliminate it with the splice operator the splice method the splice method i'm going to read he here on visual studio code remove elements hmm, from an array and if necessary insert new elements in its place so do two things if you want one is removing elements and if you want it also replace put something new in that position otherwise just remove elements hmm? and you it wants a, a starting number uh, a, a starting index uh, and how many um, things it has to remove hmm? so we can say i would like to remove three elements starting from index two and so it's going to remove three elements from index one uh, index two hmm? in this case we want to remove one element starting from index one so that, that one hmm? just index one just the element at index And it doesn't return and returns an array containing the elements that are removed so it will return an array containing in our case 18 that we again don't, are not interested in so we can just not save it in a in a variable hmm? and then we can do the same things twice so let me copy and paste here this thing uh, clearly without let hmm? just index and mean score because we cannot redefine a variable with let twice or more than once hmm? so same thing um, and splice operate in place so it actually remove the element from better score
Is everything right up to now? Yeah. One second. It's lies. So what, what is doing slice? Slice return a copy of a portion of an array into a new array. It doesn't delete, doesn't change the original array. So if we want, we could have used slice probably to select all the other elements except the minimum one and save it in yet another array and, but not directly this way. So that could have been another way around, but it, it, it involved creating a new array and having so another array and doing it twice. But it, it's a good question. So in this case, Slice is not operating on the same array, but it's creating another array. Instead, Splice is operating on the array. And as I said last time, in JavaScript, we have both. We have some method that works that doesn't change the array and create a new array and other methods that instead change the array in place and doesn't create a new array. Hmm? So yeah, we could have used also slice, but with this, this different logic, clearly. Other question? Okay, sort. Sort is nice. It's a little bit more complicated than the minimum. It's shorter, but um, what is the idea? Sort. From? From the minimum to the maximum? Shift, not unshift. Yeah, we can, yes. We, there are probably 11,000 alternatives to do that, sure, uh, all valid, um, especially for these simple things. Uh, it's, it's right, we can also do that. Um, but let's, let's to do just one example, otherwise we're going to, to have alternative one, two, three, uh, 11, and we got stick here on alternative uh, the, that way. So sorting minor to the lower to higher and then unshift, so removing the elements from the beginning. Mm. Um, so the shift is, is easy. Let me write the shift before because we need to shift twice and these are easy. Mm. So re remember shift to remove the first element from an array in place. and returns the element that has been removed that we again were not interested in as before and then we have sort sort is an interesting method in javascript nope here sort hmm. sort sort the element of an array in place so actually change the array and returns the sorted array hmm? so it have both sorting the, uh, the array and returning the array hmm? so you can also have twice the array the default sort order is ascending so if you just say array.sort it sort the array in ascending order converting the elements in a string hmm? um, so here you have an example if you have an array with 1 30 4 21 and 100,000 and you apply sort you have 1 100,000 21 30 and 4 
because 100,000 starts with one and as a string one with zeros is after one as a as single digit and it's before two of the 21 hmm, because it started with one and in alphabetical order converting not in alphabetical order but converting the numbers in string you have this behavior hmm? that is not what we want clearly uh, we can so there are some parameter hmm? so the first parameter sort and it's something that we are not we, we need to, to already we need to see uh, later on is a function hmm? so sort is one of the many javascript methods and function that accept a function as a parameter hmm? and so this function is actually the function for sorting so you can define a new function for sorting the elements of the array. Um, so uh, let's see if there is an example here. So we didn't, we, we haven't had function, I'm sorry, uh, yes, function yet, but here there is an example. So the first parameter is a function and returns a minus b mm, as a way to sort from the mm, minor one to the biggest one mm. so we are going to to do the same for now we just copy that then we we will see all these functions later on but just to, to have this working so this is how to sort from the lower to the bigger and we are just copying this this because it's shorter uh, and then we we are, we are going to understand today hopefully why hmm? so this is a function hmm? that has a function that has two parameter a and b that are a couple of elements in the array and it apply an operation to decide whether it's to be put before or after so to decide whether a needs to come up before b or vice versa and so this is sorting in from one to bigger numbers okay and we we can try actually so let me so let's try let me comment this but let's try the the, the minor methods to see if it's working so console dot log score that is the original right the original array and console.log better score because we, we wrote code but we didn't check whether it's correct or not so again we are in the exercise folder node scores hmm. Hmm. so you see uh, 25 is not in the second array and neither 18 so right now the first array was four eight elements and uh, the other one is six so we actually removed uh, the two elements up to now and the same things happens with with sort okay so add the two new score equal to the average of existing score so first of all and then we are going to also to try with sort but let's complete this first uh, what we need to do we need to add two elements equal to the rounded average of the value currently present in better score so the first thing that we are going to do is compute the average we need to add the average twice so we need to compute the average so let average equal zero for const s of better score 
average plus equal s and average divided equal better score dot length no so let's do the sum of the elements and then divide by the the, the number of elements in an array hmm? so here we see two things three fi two things that we have three things actually that we have seen last time how to iterate on an array for variable of array hmm? while for the objects that we are going to see today is for variable in array and then we perform hmm, the numerator with the sum and then we have the division of the average with the length of the array and again the length is not a function it's not a method is a property so it doesn't have parentheses hmm? length hmm? do you agree now we need to round this and as you can imagine I, i'm not going to, to open the documentation again but as you open and imagine in math there is a function that's called round that will round the a number mm? uh, so average equal math dot round of average mm? and you see here that round mm, returns the numeric expression rounded to the nearest integer mm? so just round it to the big to the integer that is nearest mm? so in this case with this number this is a useless operation because the average of that of those numbers that we put it is already an integer number but with different scores maybe we can have something 25.5 or something like this 25.6 it may happen in this case this line doesn't change anything but it's just this case um, and then we have the average and then we need to add that add the average to the um, better score array and how we can add it to the array push or on shift again we we don't care where they are so both options are fine and fine so let's use push better score dot push average and twice yes no it's fine it's clear so the, the logic is not complex clearly but it's more about probably syntax now sorry other is not a math dot average no maybe it's not called average it should be a method for calculate the mean um, but it's that is probably another alternative but also to, to try experiment with the, the cycle to the four loop um, average mean it seems not Not in math, at least. 
but even if it's not in the library there will be surely an external library doing all all the stuff but um, it will, will be probably overkill for this exercise to add another library for the average okay so let's try if this is working no here um, let's open the terminal again node scores javascript okay so the new array is 30 27 28 27 30 26 28 28 mm -hmm. these two 28 doesn't exist in the first array so we added so the average was 28 of the, the remaining score if you do the math with a calculator mm -hmm. you should found the same results and we added 28 twice mm -hmm. so we actually improved the score of this fake student imaginary student okay any question okay so let's close these and let's move on with objects uh, just a few thing about the objects and then we are going to have a break mm -hmm. but so let me open the slides that we are easier to see since we are in this moment so uh, objects i told you last time that objects are like maps or dictionaries or mm, associative arrays that you have met in other languages uh, but not only mm. so in javascript and we're going to see this eh, all non-primary not not primitive types are objects even functions are objects mm. so this is a characteristic of the language that everything except numbers strings and boolean uh, and not a number and define no, not even them so except the prim prim primitive type number string etc are objects so everything is an object mm? so they are pretty central important to use and very very flexible mm? so first thing to keep in mind is that forget about so you, if you know java you think objects like in java forget about it these are totally different things mm? uh, JavaScript could be an object-oriented language, but actually, so it has the object. It has something that we we call classes. In the, we have a key, there is a keyword in JavaScript that is class, but they are not class, like the the classes that they used to in Java. Uh, JavaScript is called a prototype-based programming language, hmm? not a class-based programming language. Hmm? So if you think of object like in Java forget about it if you don't know java good for you nothing to forget or good for you in general as you prefer uh, so in javascript typically objects are created directly with object literals hmm? without deriving them from a class you just create the object hmm? uh, objects are dynamic hmm? like a map or a dictionary they can add delete or redefine properties at any time and you can also add the delete to redefine methods at any time mm. uh, there are no mm, in the, at least at least right now in most of the javascript is implemented in the environments there are no access control methods you don't have private variables or protected everything is always public mm. so you can always change things around um, and also there is not a real difference between a property so a value inside an object and the method so function inside an object hmm? because of how javascript work they are just pro like properties so you can actually change add delete, delete mess it up as you prefer 
what is an object we, we already saw, saw parts of this uh, it's an unordered collection of properties like a map or a dictionary in which each property is as a key and a value hmm? and you retrieve property value through the name of the property and you create the object with the object literal hmm? so for instance let me close this that now it occupies space hmm? so for instance Uh, we can create um, I don't know uh, movie object that has a title a title of movie um, Suggestion. I don't remember. I have a, a black. No, no, a title. A title. A, a, a real title of a movie. Yes, also generate. It could be, could be fine, but it's a property. A title of a movie. Avatar. avatar. I like it because it's short. Uh, as a title, Avatar, not as a movie. Um, uh, generate. Um, fantasy sci-fi sci-fi um, duration <laughs> okay and then we can continue no uh, but mm, so we, we define this as an object literal um, so probably even the, the, the browser could be helpful actually so let me reopen again Chrome <laughs> Um, mm? create an object all of these are this is the key title is the key avatar is the value genre is the key sci-fi is the value etc if you want to retrieve that if you want to retrieve the value you access the key etc mm? so nothing uh, really different from what you probably are used to in other uh, programming language you can define a key in this way just writing the key or as a string these are both valid way of defining a key either with strings or with a number uh, sorry with just the name of the of the of the key just don't mix them like this pick one and choose what you prefer uh, I typically prefer to digit less charter as possible so um, I'm going often to write like this um, th there is one exception to this rule clearly um, um, for which we cannot if we want to have a key called in that way we cannot not use the string uh, that is um, um, I don't remember how it's, uh, how it's said in English but it's some okay let's say producer um, house I don't know one okay maybe it's not it's not even correct but just to, to make the example uh, is um, if you have a space if you want you can create a key with a space in the middle or somewhere with a sentence and in that case you cannot avoid using a string because otherwise it will be kept as two separate words in the programming language so you need to put them together with a string that is the only exception otherwise the, the two things are equivalent using a string or not using a string to declare a key in an object hmm? um. Hmm. 
And now let me remove this. Okay, how to access, hmm, if you want to print, let's say, uh, the title of the movie, you can write movie.title or movie square title. So, or the brackets notation or the dot notation. Notice the difference. With the dot locate notation, you use the name of the key, not as a string, just the name of the key. The other one, instead, is not the name of the key, it's the name of the key, but as a string. This also means that if you have a key, that is composed by multiple words, so it's a key with, uh, that is only in a string, like before, that produ producer house, whatever it means, you cannot use the dot notation, because you cannot write movie dot string. Hmm? But try not to have keys that are made by a sentence, and it will be easier for everybody. Hmm? Uh, so if we run these, you see that it prints avatar twice. Uh, notice this thing here. If I remove uh, the string from the bracket notation, JavaScript doesn't give me an error in the syntax. Because actually that is a valid, um, a valid way of writing without the, the, uh, the quotes. What will happen here. So why it's a valid way of, of writing? How is JavaScript interpreting the second, the title in the brackets? No, it's still the elements of um, an object, but why title with string is fine, title without a string? In this case, if I run this, it should give me an error title is not defined. Why? No. Because it looks it 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 look for a variable. Hmm? So this is titled the key with uh, quote as a string is titled the key this is titled the variable and here we don't have a variable it's called title hmm? but if we do something like this it starts working again because in that case we have a variable that is called whatever we want in this case title and the content is the name of the key is a string that is title and so it will start working. So this is, um, this is not complex because again, it's a variable, but if you have a key that's called like a variable, then you, you can have uh, clearly some, some problem. It, you have to pay attention to put the, the quotes in the right place, otherwise it's not working. So in this case, no conversion, just um, just looking for a variable, and we use we can use the square bracket notation, and not because it's an array clearly, but it's an, an alternative notation to access the object. That an object in this way is also called an associative array. So it has this way of picking up the key of the array and getting the value associated to the key. So in this case, it printed out avatar, indeed. Um, you can also hmm, do something like movie dot uh, which properties do we miss for movie another property of movies title gender duration hmm? 
Ah. Mm. Uh, director. I don't know. Uh, I don't remember who is the director. Who is the director of Avatar? Thanks. I should should have known. Um, so this is a way to add a property to the object. You have a new property that is director that is added to the movie object with that value. So we, you define a key and a value, and you can also uh, define clearly with the other notation. Movie director equal camera. These are alternative. These are the same thing. So if we run this, we create a director key with a Cameron value, and then we recreate, we replace hmm, the director key with the same content. Hmm. So the first one creates, the second one edit, in this case, but they are equivalent. Hmm. And you can also delete a property, if you want, with delete the name of the property. Mm, and this work with the dot notation and with the um, square notation. Mm, so they are alternative in basically everything, in every time they're alternative, just with this difference with, with the uh, keys with m made by multiple words. Mm. So you can add or edit uh, properties in this way, you can read the properties in this way, and you can delete the properties with the delete keyword. No, this is not a function. There is no parenthesis. Hmm? Delete space what you want to delete, the properties that you want to delete. So here there is the same things that we have said. Um, with just this, this distinction. So property names, so the keys are string, and, you, and that's why we can write it as a string or not, must be unique. In each object, if we have a director and we want to recreate a property name that is called director, we are going to overwrite the previous one um, and can be deleted at any moment with the delete keyword. The values, in this case, we had values as a string, but they can be actually everything. They could be numbers, string, other objects, arrays, functions, methods, essentially that becomes so a, a property value with a function as a value, sorry, a property name with a function as a value is a method. But the name of the method is, is the name of the properties and the, the, the body, let's say the value of the properties is the body of the function, the actual method. Hmm? So we use properties for both thing. If it contains a function, it's a method. If it contains anything else, is everything else. Hmm? So again, here, these are all strings, but these could also be, just to make an example, a number. You can, you can have an array in it. Hmm? You can have whatever, even a function. And here there is more or less the same example that we have said with the difference between um, squ uh, quotes and not quotes. Um, and this is the very quotes that we said and uh, you create can create an object in this way we already said and the, the parenthesis it should be a string but it could be also more complex like you can write person address plus one plus i where i is a variable so you are creating person address one then person address two person address three hmm? this is something that you can do so you can put an expression within the square bracket for creating an object properties. So like this, so here, you can write a director plus one. If you are in a cycle, when, one, when I is, is iterating, is changing, you can do, have director one, director two, director three. This is possible, is not really recommended a lot to have expression within the square bracket. If possible, avoid. Okay, so I think that we um, we can have 
15 minutes of stop of a break and we will start at 10 15. 